all over the world, people are taking to the streets in protest. Their demands are varied, but they have at least one thing in common. They're fed up with their governments. The public's trust in government is collapsing. Let's break that down. A Pew Research Center study found that a global median of 14% of people say they trust their government a lot to do what is right. And in 10 of the 38 countries polled, 5% or less trust their national governments a lot. Now let's take a look at the United States. Only 3% of Americans trust their government to do what is right just about always and a whopping 14% trust the US government to do what's right most of the time. Compare that to 1958, when three quarters of Americans believe their government would do what's right almost always or most of the time. That's a pretty big shift. This erosion of confidence bears out in many other ways as well. 64% of Americans say it's hard to tell the truth when an elected official is talking. A majority think that this loss of trust in the federal government makes it harder to solve problems. This isn't unique to the United States. Globally, just one in five people think the system is working for them. To understand what all of this means, it might be helpful to examine the role of trust in society. Every day, we put our faith in the hands of strangers and institutions. When we order sweet potato fries at a restaurant, we have faith that the cook will not poison us. When we go to the hospital, we trust the institution that gave the doctor her degree. But the clearest example, thanks, might be cash. The bills in your pocket don't have any particular value on their own. They're basically paper with some numbers on it. Every day, we trade money for things. All of us trusting that that money will hold roughly the same value tomorrow. But that trust, it doesn't always work out. For instance, in Venezuela, cash money is now nearly worthless. Inflation is at 10 million percent and people are paying for bread with wheelbarrows full of cash. Justified or not, the shrinking confidence in governments around the world is pushing people to other options. In Hong Kong, over a million citizens don't trust the Chinese government to respect its autonomy. They've been protesting in the streets for months, demanding a more democratic system. Greece, where only 13% of citizens trust their government, has spent the last decade grappling with on and off anti-austerity protests and riots. OK, yes, this lack of trust has led to a lot of frustration and problems, but it's also pushed people to find technological solutions. Some are turning to algorithms. Let's take a closer look at cryptocurrencies. Instead of trusting a single third party, like a bank, cryptocurrency trusts a decentralized third party, in this case, a blockchain algorithm. Data is stored across the blockchain network as a public shared ledger. To put it simply, blockchain algorithms are a system that minimize the amount of faith we need to put in any one entity. This could be a way to circumvent the government when it comes to money. So, it's no surprise that the people in Venezuela have been turning towards cryptocurrencies. Our growing fascination with self-driving cars, or even letting social media platforms choose which news articles are worthy of attention, are examples of how we're turning our trust over to technology and artificial intelligence. Of course, there is always the option of rebuilding our trust in governments. A hefty majority of people across the 38 nations polled still think democracy is the best way to govern. 68% of Americans think it's important to improve confidence in the federal government, and 84% think it's possible. 
This would likely involve rebuilding the institutions to actually work for the people whose trust they need to survive. One method could see technology being used to help citizens more directly access their democracies, like Taiwan has done. In 2014, activists occupied Taiwan's legislature to protest a potential trade deal. The government responded by working with a hacker community called GovZero to create an app called VTaiwan, which lets users debate issues relating to the digital economy. Since then, the app has helped to resolve some tough policy questions like how to regulate Uber. In Argentina, the Net Democracy Foundation is helping to build digital tools to increase civic participation and transparency. They created a platform called Democracy OS, where people can debate and vote on specific policy items. Net Democracy has even founded its own political party, where its representatives agree to vote however their constituents decide on the Democracy OS app. This digital democracy, can it be the way of the future? In the meantime, millions of people will continue to take to the streets to demand more from their governments, more accountability, more say, more transparency. Because here's the thing, greater transparency tends to result in more trust. Whichever means we choose, it's going to be hard work. Do we trust each other enough to make it happen.